We'll, we don't have that confirmed, but that is what reports are saying at this time. An eyewitness has come forward and said that's what she heard. But shall we move on? Because there's lots of other news. Uh, Rishi Sunak, he's waded into the ongoing row with Ireland, warning that the UK will not take migrants back from the Republic. Well, the Prime Minister said that he was not interested in a returns agreement with Ireland uh, for as long as the EU was not interested in a returns agreement with the United Kingdom. Yes, his intervention comes after Irish ministers blamed an influx of migrants coming into their country on the UK government's Rwanda plan. Curious. Well, we're joined now by the author and commentator on Irish politics, Kevin Marr. Kevin, uh, how credible Kevin. is this idea that actually this is the Rwanda scheme that is, that is uh, diverting migrants from the United Kingdom to the Republic of Ireland? Uh Frankly, actually, I don't think there's very much in it at all. I think this issue of uh, migrants crossing over, over the invisible border from Northern Ireland into the Irish Republic has been going on for the last five years or so. It's not new in that in that respect. It's definitely happening. And, and the, the Irish Justice Minister, Helen McAtee, told her to an Irish parliamentary committee last week that around 80 percent of, of the asylum seekers that Ireland is dealing with have come from that route. Now, you don't need to be an expert on the weather or sea lanes to realise that it's unlikely that people will be getting in dinghies and arriving in Ireland, bypassing Britain. So, so they're getting into Ireland via Northern Ireland in the main. And, and the, the, the figures tell, tell a tale. The first quarter of this year, Ireland took in 4,715 asylum seekers at its International Protection Office in the centre of Dublin, which is why, of course, there's all those tents in the centre of Dublin at the moment. And only 420 people presented themselves at ports and airports for asylum. Now, that those figures have completely reversed over the course of the last five years. I, I suspect Rwanda is, is a minor issue. I don't, I don't, I don't imagine for, for, for a time, not to sound flippant, but I don't imagine people on the beaches at Calais are scrolling through their smartphones and looking at what stage the Rwanda bill is at and making a decision about whether they go to Britain or not. So I think that's a fairly, uh, a, a bit of a side issue. But, I mean, but Kevin, the, would the, you the go as far point. as to say um, it's a deflection tactic on the part yes, of the Irish leadership? Is. They've got a huge problem on their hands. You mentioned the tent cities. It's very visible. There yeah. are stark images out there for everyone to see. Uh, huge numbers of asylum seekers and illegal migrants just pitching up tents in the centre of town. You've also seen riots on the streets, mass protests, arson attacks. Uh, the Irish yeah. leadership are in a very sticky situation. It is. I mean, I, I, just, as, just as a clarification, I think it's a deflection on behalf of the British government rather than the Irish government. But you're right. Ireland's it's, it's, sorry, with, Kevin, it's the Irish government that are saying this. It, it's, 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 it's British ministers that are saying this, that the, that the Rwanda... The, 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 the is, deputy is actually, prime minister of Ireland came up with... It's, the, it's, British, the, the British the ministers don't didn't say this until the Irish Rwanda. ministers said it. It's nothing to do with Rwanda. The figures I've just given bear that out. Now, no, no, I agree with you. With... Kevin, Kevin, can we just get to the bottom of this? Because let me, let me just because I, point, because I agree with you. Let me finish this point, if I may. Kevin, if I may, if I may. point to him. If, Ireland's if I may, grappling Kevin. with immigration in the same way that Britain is, and three quarters of the Irish population, three quarters of voters are saying, look, enough's enough. We've played the game. We've taken in people from Ukraine. We've, we've been, you know, we've been a good neighbour. But enough's enough. We've now got a situation in Southern Ireland where one in five of the resident population was not born in Ireland. Now, that, that's, a, that's a huge figure to, 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 to ponder. It's much higher than it is in Britain, much mm. higher than it is even in America. So there's a real sense in Ireland that immigration is rocketing up the list of voters' concerns, and they want something done about it. And the Irish government is kind of all over the place, just mm. as the British government is, and every government across Europe. And the fundamental point is that we've got to collaborate, whether that's Dublin, London, uh, Germany, France, any of the Mediterranean countries, because it's a problem mm. for all of us. And at the moment, mm. we're all trying we're all trying to deal with it bilaterally in our, in our in our own individual silo, and no one is getting anywhere. That's the fundamental problem. Yes, I think you're right there, and and also the figures completely bear this out. It's it's not just uh, since the Rwanda bill has passed that there's been this influx into Ireland. The last two yeah. years have been extraordinary in terms of the number of illegal migrants in Ireland, proportionally far higher than the United Kingdom, uh, but. But it's the Irish Deputy Prime Minister who brought the Rwanda bill into the question. He was asked about this last week. He started to suggest that it was uh, UK migration policy that was forcing people in to the Republic of Ireland. And then the Taoiseach uh, went further and seemed to endorse that with a number of interviews over the weekend. That, that's only after that point did Rishi Sunak comment on it. I, I, I gently suggest it, this started in Dublin. 
we've, we've seen lots of lots of commentary in the British media suggesting that as well. It's a red herring. It's nothing to do with Rwanda, I think, is, is basically the, the fundamental point. The issue in Ireland has been going on for several years, as you, as you rightly say. And they, they don't have the same social infrastructure to deal with it. So what we're seeing is the Irish government beg borrowing and stealing accommodation all the way across Ireland, trying to put asylum seekers in little hotels and B&Bs out in the sticks. And the locals are going berserk about it. And it's becoming a real issue. And of course, Ireland's got a general election coming up in the next few months, just as Britain has. It may even be held at the same time later in the, later in the autumn. And it's becoming the fundamental issue. And, and of course, whether you're the Irish government, right or left, or you're the British government, or you're a Tory government, or a Labour government, you know, this problem is very, very big very, very difficult to deal with. And all governments have very few levers to be able to pull. And what we don't see is that coordinated effort across Europe, people in the EU, countries outside the EU, because unless we address the numbers and the problems and get it right at this point, in 10 or 15 years time, it's going to be an awful lot worse than it is today. And the only way of doing that is to, is to, is to work effectively with the states in North Africa and states to, to, to the east of the European Union to be able to soak up these migrant pathways that are coming into Europe, mm. because what we're dealing with today is going to be nothing. Yes, Kevin, I'm, I'm absolutely sure you're, you're right on that point. But may I suggest that the Irish leadership have been, let's say, hopelessly naive about how concerned their own public, their own voters, their own electorate, their own people would be about the huge numbers of people. Is it not the case that the leadership was very welcome to open, uh, had open arms to the world, and now they're uh, a bit concerned and slamming on the brakes, or at least trying to? I think that's a fair point. That's absolutely a fair point. I mean, I mean, I, I characterise it that what you've got is an Irish political elite that are going around um, the chancelleries of Europe ri writing checks about migration, what they're prepared to do, which then the Irish people have got to pay. And they are paying, and they're paying because you, you've got a situation, for example, in many small towns with perhaps a little hotel or a B&B, that the tourism industry has been knocked sideways because that's been taken over because, because 50 guys have been dumped there. Now, I'm not blaming the, the, those people trying to come here for, for a better life, but the fact is Ireland doesn't have the same social infrastructure to be able to so call this up. It doesn't have the same welfare state in the same way which is why the Irish government has now arrived at a point where it's giving some of these guys a tent and saying, mm -hmm. on, on, on your way, lad. So they're letting them come in, but mm -hmm. then they're not doing anything effective with them. So it's, it's a kind of real hypocrisy that you're being very loose in terms, in terms of the, the commitments that you're making that you cannot honour. And that's very yeah. much what yeah. we're seeing in Ireland, in, in lots of, in, in, both in Dublin and also out in the, to the provincial towns as well. It really does put it into perspective. I mean, the idea of using disused RAF bases in England or, 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 or a barge that was once used uh, by the Swedes and the Dutch, uh, and now and, uh, comparing that to, 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 to a city of tents yeah. in Dublin, it really does show the difference there. Um, but Kevin Marr, thank you so much for talking through what is a deeply concerning issue, the other side of the Irish Sea. The Taoiseach is still saying the UK needs to take back the migrants we don't want. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I assume that Rishi Sunak will want to stand firm on this one. But you never know. We have been uh, uh, given the charge labelled as being a little soft or in the could past. Or could this be the piece of leverage that Rishi Sunak has been looking for mm. for the last two years? Might we finally be able to open up conversations about a returns agreement with the European Union, mm. returning people back to France in the first place, which would have negated the last two years of mess over this issue? Well, maybe. Maybe, Tom. Maybe.